Yo, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is just a quick notice that the channel will be changing now. I used to make food content. I did a little bit of gaming content as well, but my PC broke down. This is essentially just a backstory. Another thing I want to add is I want to start. I want to speak a lot quicker than some other videos that I've seen. And I know people don't have a lot of time anyways. I want to keep the videos as concentrated but as full of information as can be. So anyways, <clears throat> my PC broke down essentially the graphics card fried. And I had a month off of not being able to do any content because I couldn't edit it and all those types of things. And in that time... I had one of my friends tell me someone who was close to me once upon a time and she essentially just told me oh you're just out here doing these little food videos and initially that kind of hit me hard because any person who's a creator who goes into making their own sort of art I mean I look at this as art as well because it's still creation but whether that's painting drawings whatever type of art music you have a certain connection to that and if someone attacks it it's like they're attacking you personally so the only thing i could do was build up this wall of resistance and be like you don't know what you're talking about people do this type of content all the time and they do pretty well with it and the one thing she said that was pretty interesting to me that i sat with for that whole month what she said Yes, but maybe those people don't have as much to say as you do. And that kind of sat with me for some time. And the reason being is that when I'm with people in person and stuff, I'm talking about all these different things. Like even the topic I'm talking about today. I'm always talking about all these different things I've read in certain books. I've looked up, I've seen videos. But then when it comes to me actually having a, my own platform... I don't say a damn thing. I simply just do the things that I was doing before. Even though I do enjoy it. But I kind of saw her point. So after having time to think things over. This is what I've been moved towards. This is what I've been drawn towards. And so this is why the content is going to shift this way. It's basically just how I normally am in real life. Talking but to a camera. And... Basically, what it came down to was that I was never trying to be like some sort of influence on people's lives or anything like that. But what did happen was I'm always talking about these different types of things. And through a conversation with someone, I had mentioned a couple of things. And about a month or three weeks later, they came back to me and told me like, wow, you know that thing you spoke to me about? I've been doing that and oh my goodness, I've seen this result. And when I heard that, I was taken back because I was thinking, wow, here's one person that was just a conversation as I was passing by in life and it set this person off on a different trajectory. So now that was just one person. So if I get up on YouTube and I can do that maybe with one or two people, that's, that's a big victory. So that's essentially where I feel like this is what I've gone through in my life. These are the things that I've been doing. That's all. There's no, um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist or anything. I'm just simply talking about, I've read this book. I've done this. I've tried this technique. I've, I've done it for myself. And now I'm giving the insight about that. And that brings us to today's topic, semen retention. Um sure people have heard about it. I had heard about this for many years especially because I come from a martial arts background and what you would always hear before fights was that especially with like the high level professionals boxers doesn't matter MMA kickboxing during their fight camp they would retain their seed and they would always talk about they have more energy more strength all different types of stuff and it just it gives them more of that that boost and testosterone and it want that grit to win. And so I had known about it from there. And then I think it was because of testicular cancer during for November. Um, 
no, not November, but I think it started as Movember, where you you grow out your your mustache or whatever, and that and was also poured in for testicular cancer, and then NNN arrived, which was no, not November, where guys were doing that as well, and so I'd always been seeing this from a distance, and I never really paid attention to it because my backstory, like all other guys, I'm sure. You basically form these patterns as you're younger, from 16, even younger. Me, I was as young as 14. You start these patterns every day. You know, you hit puberty and you're just surrounded by all this imagery and stuff. And you start building this habit, which to me, as I can look at today, is very, it's not good for the mind. It's not good for the psyche. And it's just, it's not good for the spirit. And so I... I eventually started to think about this, not because I had seen anything in particular, but because at any at a point in someone's life, you always get to that point where you sort of, st- you're looking at your life and th- maybe it comes from trauma, like something you wanted, you didn't get it. And so now you're sitting back and you're going, okay, why does this person get it? And I don't get it. And then you start looking at your life. If you truly take accountability, you start looking at your life and you go, okay, wait. What are the things that I'm doing that's wrong? What are the things that I can do to improve and to become better? And one of my issues was always, I never had trouble getting a girlfriend or things like that. I've always been able to get girlfriends. That's not. That's never been my issue. The issue was normally it would be a specific chick that I wanted and I couldn't get her. And that would beat me up more than anything in the world. And, you know, I st- you, start, you start looking deeper into things. You start looking up, you know, all different types of things in terms of why some guys get women and other guys don't. Why are women sit attracted to some And then you start seeing things like high testosterone and then you start going down that route there. And then you start seeing like when you are spilling the cup, this is spilling your semen, you are lowering your testosterone as well. And then it's like, oh, wait, but if I'm doing that, then maybe that's the reason why I'm not, I'm not, I don't have this testosterone and this energy to get the person that I want. Um, so, you know, these are the types of things that come up when you start going for the, on that journey inside. I'm not saying that is the particular reason, but that could have been one of the causes. And it led me here. So I eventually just started to do that. I was, I've been training a lot. Um, so like I said, through kickboxing MMA, they would do that through fight camps where you wouldn't spill the the cup of Hermes, as they call it. And essentially what happened was I started doing that just for my training. And then kind of on the weekends, I would, you know, do the thing. But then I would always realize like on a Sunday, I would be low energy and I would, it's always a big reset, you know, and I could feel the difference in my energy levels. And so eventually I get to this point right now where, which was last year, about the 27th of August, it's 150 days to this point, which is, if you had to tell me this last year or something, I'd be like, okay, that's crazy. You know, I'd come up with some reason why that's not good to do or whatever, but this is what benefits that I've sort of experienced from it. So initially right off the bat, more energy. I'm going to keep these short and sweet. I'll be doing more videos anyways on more in depth on certain things because I do have a lot. But like I said, I don't want to um, want to keep all this videos compressed and not too crazy long. More energy. So I I was someone like if I didn't get my enough hours of sleep, say if I went to bed at two o'clock and then I had to be up at five or six. So, you know, you're only looking at four to five hours of sleep. I would feel it tremendously and, you know, it would take me at least like an hour and a half to like really drag myself through the morning coffee and stuff and try to get a bit of energy. But then the nighttime, I'm gone. 
that seems to be gone because I can do that exact same thing. Like even last night, um, the dogs were going crazy and I was up and down like constantly. I didn't get a, a proper moment of sleep like straight through the night. I was up about four times getting up, checking things, this, that and the other. And I woke up, I was up at half past six and I, it feels like I slept the whole night. It just feels like even right now I have so much energy and to me... That's just something that I feel. Is it directly towards retention? Who knows? But what I do know is I do have a lot more energy. Even when I'm training, when I'm running, I can, I can come straight off the couch and go for a run of 10 kilometers. And I would ask myself, like, damn, I got a lot of energy. Like, this is crazy. I've come straight off of the couch to do this. I'm, so that's one of the first things, uh, more energy. Second thing is I'm less moody. And this is an interesting one for me because as a kid, I was always irritable about everything. And obviously, especially when you hit puberty and stuff, like teenage boys, you know, we just become moody and, you know, we hate everything. And this is just our bodies sort of changing. This is us becoming men. Um, and so for a long time, I just thought me being moody and irritable is a trait of mine. That's just how it is. Um, if something annoys me, I show my aggression, not like anger, but the frustration of just, ah, do you know what I mean? And that seems to be gone. And in moments that I do feel frustrated, I, it's, I let it go so much easier. Now that could be, me just growing up and realizing that you can't be frustrated about every little thing that could be a possibility but also i feel i felt it a little bit more during this time of retention where it's simply like s stuff will happen around me and like i kind of just like it'll happen i kind of feel that old programming sort of kick in and then all of a sudden i'm just like overwhelmed by you know what it's okay like I'm not going to let the outside world dictate how I feel on the inside. So that's just like an interesting way that things have been happening. Um, on that as well, I'm more open. Um, and this is this is also very interesting. So people would come over, visit the home. And I would kind of be sitting. I would I would hear people. And the first thing I would do is get up and go close my door. You know what I mean? Because it's like. I'm already setting the stage as I have no interest in seeing or talking to any people who are coming to visit you, if you know what I mean. So it's close the door and if someone even knocks, <sighs> like what is it, do you know? That has changed. Through retention, I am so much more open. It's like there's something in me that wants to go to people and I want to like I want to see their reactions to me because I feel like I'm a lot I'm fuller, excuse the pun, but I just I feel like there's so much more in me that I I want to express to people. And I think this comes down to there's a chart I think his name is Richard Haw David Hawkins and he has like this consciousness chart where it's like Level 1000 is like your full consciousness. And then the bottom one is shame. The, like the lowest you can be on the consciousness scale is having shame. And this is what ties into that being more open is that I believe when you are constantly doing this and you have this um, disgusting imagery open and it is disgusting. It's a degenerative behavior and it's to me... I'm glad I'm past it now, but you have this imagery open, you're hiding away, you're in the toilet, you're in your bed, you're behind closed doors, it's all done in secret, and what ends up happening is that what guys don't realize is like, the more you do that, the more you start adding these increments of shame to yourself, you start building up this like shame on the inside, and you don't really feel it, you don't feel it like that, but over time, it happens and you start carrying that shame with you. Start bringing yourself down on that consciousness scale. And what ends up happening is that people can are very sensitive to your energy. Because like Neville Goddard says, 
people reflect back to you what you feel about yourself. So essentially what that means is that you are basically carrying around that shame, but you don't truly know it, right? Because how can someone really see shame? But people will feel that and they'll reflect it to you. And the women are very, very good with emotions. They can pick things up very, very easily. And so it's not a surprise that most guys who are doing this lifestyle of just spilling the cup are having like bad experiences with women um it's not a surprise because the woman can see it it's like oh he's a good guy but it's just something off about him and and i feel like that's one of the bigger things that helped me a lot to see as well quick story was that i know someone i've known them for a long time and when i went to this little get together and this was only about a month and a half into my retention last year and she came walking up to me and we have been friends for some time and I was just standing there talking to someone and she comes up to me and she goes Mikey so I'm like yeah and she goes are you wearing contacts so I'm like with my glasses what she was referring to was like color contacts you know those color contacts and I was like, no, my eyes are dark brown or brown. And she goes, oh. And she's, she has this puzzled look on her face like. Durr. She doesn't know what's going on. And she's like, oh, because you've got like a sparkle in your eyes. And I was like, wow. Wow. And I immediately, it took me straight back to the retention thing. Because. I don't know that's and I guess it's back to that thing that I, that I said was like people reflect to you how you feel about yourself so that was a big plus and so when I hear things like that it even makes me more open to go to people to go talk to people groups of people socialize because you know when you are on this level of retention you can see yourself as a very um, small group of guys out there who are actually doing this compared to a whole room like if you had to go to a bar or something and you were doing retention you'd most likely be one of the only people in there who's doing it and so it immediately people can see the contrast i i don't know exactly what it is but people can feel it and people can see it um i'm a lot more sensitive to life um and there's some other things that i've also done as well that i've stopped like i used to smoke weed every day all the time um, I will be doing a different video on that. That's a whole different topic. So there's, I, I can also say that me having this, like, I'm more sensitive to everything could also be me not smoking anymore. But what I mean is I go for these walks every morning and I promise you, as soon as I open the door and I walk outside, the cold air, I feel it on my skin. <sighs> the air that i breathe in is just incredible and the so when the sun hits me I, I get like this dopamine rush it's like i can feel everything even just hearing the birds chirp around me like it puts you all into this ambiance of what life is and it actually makes you realize that just being alive alone is the most craziest um ecstasy pull you could ever take if you know what i mean and so but i'm even more sensitive to the surroundings now as opposed to because i've always been walking even before i'd started retention and i'm telling you right now i'm just so much more sensitive to everything even to people's moods and stuff you just feel it a lot and you're like hmm i can like this person is smiling but i can feel that you there's something going on with you from a mile away that's also pretty interesting um my taste has changed in women um so everybody knows what a thirst trap is if you don't know what a thirst trap is it's essentially just when it's a it's a trap to get guys to sort of you know i don't want to use the term simp but get them to lust over someone certain imagery so you'll have it on instagram and all these apps where chicks will put on certain makeup contour on their face and all this types of stuff they'll dress a certain way with cleavage and all that 
Now, me of the past, I used to love that stuff. Um, you know, that was my thing. And I think it's also because it's very close related to how the chicks dress up in the prawn videos. And so what happens is that now, now I see this and I go, huh, like, I know what you're trying to do and I'm not interested in that. But the, here's the funny thing, what I really have been more attracted to because I've been out, I've went and I've spoke to people. For some reason, I'm so much more attracted to someone who's a quote unquote plain Jane. Um, hardly any makeup, dressed simply, nice but simple. And there's just like, there's something about that now for me that's just way more impactful on my soul. It's not, it's not like you don't have to smear yourself with makeup in order to grab attention you just it's more of like like a pure soul because you are who you are this is your energy this is your light you don't have to put makeup on and stuff in order to gain attention you are just beautiful inside and out and so that's that's the best way i can describe that and so those are just some of the things that i feel internally and now let's look at some of the other things which is manifestations are out of this world like so that's a lot another thing that i talk about a lot is my manifestations thinking about something a mental image then feeling the exact emotion strong emotion letting it go and then seeing it realized in your 3d reality that there is the basic way that I can explain what manifestation is. You've always been manifesting, even as a kid. But this is also a different video that I'm going to do that on. But essentially, the, the, way, the way I'm able to think about something, feel about something, let it go, and how it pops up in my life is insane through these, these days of retention. Um, another thing that this is a big feather in my cap is that I'm an actor, so I would go to all these auditions and stuff. I've been going for years, since a little kid. And I've never got anything substantial. About a month and a half into retention, I... Because I took a big break from acting. A month and a half into retention, I went to an audition. And it was a different type of audition because there was going to be a, some audience. You like you, So you would do the, the thing in front of an audience. Um, which is very different because normally it's just you and the casting directors and on the way there I just I closed my eyes and for some reason I just I, I imagined the end and that's what Neville Goddard also talks about the wish fulfilled right L walking in the wish fulfilled and I closed my eyes and I imagined people clapping -da -da, standing and clapping for me and I, I walked within that feeling and I walked within that assumption and literally that is exactly what played out. They were standing up and clapping for me after I did my monologue and two days later I got the job. So it's my first and it's a movie. So that alone is something that I've struggled with for a long time asking why, why, why are people not accepting me why is it that i'm going to all these auditions and not getting a thing and boom it seems to work here um and that's just those are some of the things that i can kind of list now, i made a quick list but these are the types of things these are the types of changes that's happened to me so if anything here is what you feel that might work for you I think this might be for you as well. And to end this off, now people, this is a question I've been getting the whole time. It's like, oh, so what are you, what are you going to be doing with this? How long are you going to be doing this? And I've thought about this for some time. And now I've realized there was a quote I saw from a guy. I think his name is Joseph. Um, he has a channel called Masculine Theory. I'll put his channel down in the description or something because... He's got some really cool insight on stuff as well. But he had a post on YouTube, like a status. You know, you can put like statuses now and stuff. And he basically said, 
and I don't know if he quoted it from somewhere, but I didn't see like, you know, quotation marks, but it basically said, be a monk or be married. And that really resonated with me a lot because it's that simple. Like I lived that life, that crazy life of the tenders and the bumbles and all these things. And just, you just you're just with someone, you're always with someone different and there's no control and you kind of just like, your energy is just everywhere and you're bringing all these people into your life. And I just, there was a point where I was just extremely empty. So I can understand that side of things. I'm not someone who's like, who's never been on that end and now I'm just deciding I'm on this end because I couldn't get that in the first place. No, I'm coming from a place where I was there and it completely ate me up. Like I felt drained. My soul was gone. I just, I felt evil in a way. I I just didn't feel like me. So this is why I agree with what he says. Like until I find the perfect matrimony, which is another video I'll go into as well. It's, I'm going to live the, the life of a monk and until I'm married. And from what I've seen, the stares I get, I go into the malls and stuff and everybody's just staring at me, guys and girls. And and it's like, I'm always kind of like, wait, what's, what are they looking at? You know, and it's, and I, I feel like it comes from the semen retention. So I only said 150 days now for this video, but I'm going to stop counting. This is now, it's a lifestyle. This is now where I'm at with things it's it's not something that I'm gonna go and count and be like oh I'm on 300 days it's like no until I have that perfect matrimony and actually find someone who um who reflects me back internally this will be the way So yeah, that's what I've got to say about this. I probably did talk a little bit long, but I had a lot to say about this. This is the first video. Like, share, subscribe if you want to. Um, I know people who followed the other stuff, they might leave, which is okay. Um, All the best. But I also know that there's new people who might join who are interested in these types of topics. And yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.